Well, welcome back. What you are looking at on our cover first slide today is uh, this is a side of a mountain in Death Valley. Uh, look at the minerals and the colors. There's some copper in there. I really don't know all the different minerals, but there's white and purple and blue and, and turquoise. Just absolutely uh, beautiful when you stand back and take a look at that. We're looking across the ravine there that's uh, pretty spectacular. So I want to thank Sherry again for her lovely pictures. Uh, we are well below sea level here and uh, probably uh, one of the lower places on the planet. Very interesting to look at the soil and this kind of thing. So once again, we are here for the book of Revelation as a relevant book for today. The book of Revelation are the thoughts of God. They are his word given to John. John is writing them as a revelation that God is on your side. So we're at Revelation 8. It is the last of the seven seals, which we will read, but we will discuss later. And we will talk about the first two trumpets. So if you're ready, here we go. All right, Revelation 8, verse 1. When the Lamb broke the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about a half an hour. And I told you we're going to revisit this when we talk about the seventh trumpet. Verse 2, I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and the seven trumpets were given to them. So when we talk about trumpets, and, and those trumpets are blown in history, I've got two Old Testament passages, and then I have from Numbers the instructions for when trumpets are blown, but I'm only going to quote two of them. I'll let you look up Numbers 10, 1 to 10, which were the instructions or the directions of when to blow the trumpets at appropriate times. So we're going to go to Exodus 19. It, it says, So it came about on the third day, when it was morning, that there were thunder and lightning flashes and a thick cloud in the mountain and a very loud trumpet sound. Did I read that correctly? A thick cloud upon the mountain and a very loud trumpet sound so that all the people in the camp trembled. I, I mean, that's quite a sound system if you stop and think about that. Notice now another case. This is where the trumpet isn't coming from God on the mountain. It is now coming from the priests. This is the story of the fall of Jericho. Also, seven priests shall carry seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark. Then... On the seventh day of marching around the city, seven times, the priest shall blow the trumpets. And as you may well know the story, on the seventh day, everyone shouted, stamped their feet, and they blew the trumpets, and the walls of Jericho collapsed, and they conquered the city of Jericho. So here's heavenly, divine trumpet blowing, causing the people to tremble, and here's earthly trumpet blowing, and then there's further instruction. So take time to read Numbers 10, 1 to 10. So when I introduce the trumpets, I want you to understand the trumpets are the answer of God to the breaking of the seals and a response to the prayers of all the saints. Keep in mind that the Jewish Christians understood the language of the trumpets as they were familiar with that language in the Old Testament. It was used for the language of judgment. In this case, as we look at the trumpets, it is God defending the church from their oppressors. In the Old Testament, it was God defending Israel and Judah from their oppressors. They would certainly be able to help any new Christian who joined the church from that community to understand the messages as God acts on behalf of his people. In other words, in the early church, God was an active, ever-present God moving on behalf of his church. Now, I happen to believe that is true today, but it is not shared by all Christians. Verse 3, another angel came and stood at the altar, holding a golden censer with much incense, and much incense was given to him so that he might add it to the prayers of all the saints on the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints went up before God out of the angel's hand. So I want you to just picture this for just a moment, that if you walked into the Old Testament sanctuary that Moses built, there would be 
the outer court where the daily the people would bring their lamb or their offering and, and do repentance. There was the labor where the priests would be doing the ritual cleansing for themselves to go into the temple. Then in the temple, there would be on one side the seven candlestick, a candlestick with seven candles. On the right side would be 12 loaves of bread. Then, as you looked right down the center before the curtain, before the, in front of the most holy place, would be a golden altar. And that is where the, print, the, the priest would take the censer filled with incense, representing the prayers of the people. And those prayers with the coal taken from the altar and the incense would then make this sweet fragrance of smoke that would go up over the top of the curtain and roll over into the most holy compartment representing the throne of God. So here in Revelation 8, 3, and 4, we have that story unfolding now in the heavenly dimension. Keep in mind, when the priest was in that room before that altar with the incense, it was during the intercession of the earthly priest representing in this story the intercession of Christ in the heavenly realm. So when we, stud <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> when we study the trumpets, these trumpets are blown under the intercession of Christ. I just want that to settle in for just a moment. So now we know that from his ascension and inauguration in Revelation 4 and 5, the beginning of his intercession until the second coming, that is the block of time in which these trumpets are blown. It's very simple. It doesn't have to be complicated. It says in verse 5, Then the angel took the censer and filled it with the fire of the altar and threw it to the earth. There followed peals of thunder and sounds and flashes of lightning and an earthquake. Now, remember what I said that the trumpets were in response to the prayers of the saints? That is why the censer now is coming down to the earth with the sounds of thunder and flashes of lightning symbolic of judgments, and those judgments are going to fall on the earth. The question is to who and to where? During the intercession of Christ. So we're not talking final judgments here. We're talking about judgments that are going to fall, and we will look at the context of that here in just a moment. We can identify the time of the trumpets by the location of the temple, or in the temple where the intercession's being done, and the altar that was used during the intercession for God's people at that time. Now, <clears throat> this parallels the ministry, the trumpets that is, parallels the ministry of Jesus to his church on earth. Jesus walking among the candlesticks wearing the garment of a priest with a golden sash. The message to the seven churches calling them to repent. The seven seals, the prophetic story of the gospel going to the world, resulting in the persecution of the saints. That was the fifth seal. And at the same time, the seven trumpets are God acting against the oppressors for the prayers of the saints under that altar. So all the suffering, the persecution of the Jews in the early church, the persecution of Rome, the persecution of the church during the dark ages with religious wars and other things taking place, then when we look at the trumpets blowing, it is going to be judgments falling against the oppressors who are opposed to Christ's new church. So the action of the censer filled with incense and fire cast to the earth is happening during Jesus' intercession or Christ's intercession. The trumpets would be announcements of the coming action of God against the oppressors of the new church. We've consistently started the seven churches and the seven seals following the crucifixion of Christ or starting at the cross, reaching all the way down to the return of Jesus. So we will start the seven trumpets in the same consistent manner as they begin during Christ's intercession after his ascension. Now, I've said that several times. Uh, redundancy. I want you to get a really clear picture of this. The first and second trumpets blow bringing judgments on two people or two nations that persecuted the church. Israel and Rome were the two nations, first of all, that had crucified Christ. They would also be the two nations that would persecute the early church. 
Israel suffered the judgment on Jerusalem, their capital, in AD 70, with its utter destruction as prophesied by Jesus. Then later Rome would fall at the hands of the surrounding tribes. Now listen to what Jesus prophesied. Uh, Matthew 23, 37 to 24, verse 2. Beginning verse 37, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, Jesus spoke, who kills the prophets and stone, stones those who are sent to her. How often I wanted to gather your children together the way a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, and you were unwilling. Behold, your house is being left unto you desolate, for I say to you, from now on you will not see me until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Chapter 24, verse 1. Jesus came out from the temple and was going away when his disciples came up to the point up to point out the temple buildings to him. And he said unto them, Do you not see all these things? Truly I say to you, now talking about the temple, not one stone here will be left upon another. So here Jesus is prophetically telling them of the judgment that is going to come on Jerusalem, the capital of Israel. Verse 6. The seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. The first sounded, and there came hail and fire mixed with blood, and they were thrown to the earth. And a third of the earth was burned up, a third of the trees were burned up, and all the green grass was burned up. So I want to talk about the thirds. The thirds would be then a portion of the areas in which Satan claimed were his territories. Okay? So these are going to be judgments on the things that Satan is using to go against God, to go against Christ in the great controversy and the conflict between good and evil. In verse 6 of chapter 8, And the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. The first sounded, and there came hail and fire mixed with blood, and they were thrown to the earth. Uh, in Isaiah 40, verse 6, a voice calls out, Then he answered, What shall I call out? And then the words, all flesh is grass. So I want you to understand the symbolism of those three things. Here, Isaiah is referring to flesh as grass. People are grass. Okay, so we talk about a third of the earth, the trees and the grass. These are symbolic of the things in which there is a judgment coming on. Verse 7, and a third of the earth was burned up. The first trumpet falls on Israel for breaking the covenant with God, crucifying Jesus, and a rejection of the gospel of justification by faith alone. I want you to understand that any and all religions that are based on human behavior proving they're good enough to be called God's people is basically blasphemy because it's the proclamation that in you is something good enough to qualify you to stand before God, which means then Jesus is a secondary savior. Notice what Peter said. For it is time for the judgment to begin with the household of God, and if it begins with us first, what will be the outcome for those who do not obey the gospel of God? So even in the early church, they understood the judgment was going to begin at the house of God first. A third of the trees burned up and a third of the green grass. John the Baptist in uh, Matthew 3 verses 7 and 10 refers to the Jewish leaders as trees. Notice this. And when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? In verse 10, the axe is already laid at the root of the trees. Now he's speaking about the Pharisees and Sadducees. Therefore, every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire, again pronouncing a judgment is coming on those who, first of all, are going to crucify Christ and believe that their righteousness qualifies them to do such a thing. So we've already read Isaiah 46. He reveals the prophetic understanding of the grass. What shall I call out? All flesh is grass. Let's move on now to the second trumpet. The second angel sounded, and something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea. I mean, just picture this. If John is seeing this like, like 
you know, a 3D movie in his head. Something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea and a third of the sea became blood and a third of the creatures that were in the sea and had life died and a third of the ships were destroyed. Now we know Rome was the recipient of the second judgment as that trumpet blew. Notice in Jeremiah 51, a mountain is a kingdom. Behold, speaking now, God, I am against you, O destroying mountain who destroys the whole earth, declares the Lord. I will stretch out my hand against you. I will row you, roll you down from the crags, and I will make you a burned out mountain. That's from Jeremiah in the Old Testament. Almost the same language of the trumpet, uh, that second trumpet that is blowing, and it is a judgment that is going to fall on Rome. We'll look at that in just a moment. But remember the thirds represent the judgments that fall on the, the influence that Satan has on the earth with the nations. So turning the sea, seas, and waters in prophecy represent those who are opposed to God. The creatures are the ones who benefited and their economy is destroyed. The ships are the wealth and the pride of a nation, and a third of them were destroyed. What would remain of Rome would then become a new empire we will be talking about later. The fall of Rome was interesting. Three armies, three tribes came against the Roman Empire, and she went up in flames. They destroyed your economy, and God's justice was served. Here are the three tribes. Genesaric was the Vandal, Alaric was the Goth, Attila the Hun, those three, call them generals if you would, or war chiefs or whatever, they came and collapsed the pagan Roman Empire, and it would be replaced with a new Christian Roman Empire. And that, that prophetic story we will be looking at in depth as we move through the book of Revelation, because that empire will continue to unfold and do an interesting, well, we just cover that when we get there. So that is our first two trumpets. Remember the seals came in sets of four and then three. The trumpets come in sets of four and then three, and then there was an interlude. The 144,000 was an interlude. Okay, so we're going to look at the next two trumpets, trumpet three and four in our next session. Okay, then we will visit an interlude just like we did with the seals. So I want you to notice there's a consistent pattern that flows in the book of Revelation. That consistency helps us keep it clear in our minds. As the seals unfolded in history, so now we see the trumpets are going to unfold in history and the history of the church in a similar kind of way, only for a different purpose. That God is acting on behalf of his people all the way until he returns. So I hope you enjoy that. Another lovely picture I hope you enjoy. And uh, we shall see you in our next session. I just hope you have a really blessed day. And we look forward to seeing you again. Thank you for watching.